Hi, welcome back. This is going to be our first installment of the lunchroom. Tonight I want to talk about the um, high exhaust temperature light that comes on on the dash when you are in a uh, regen, depending on how the light is set up. So remember, we talked a little bit about how you can configure the light. It can be set to not come on ever at all. It can be set to come on whenever the temperatures are hot, regardless of road speed. It can set to be to come on and then when you hit a certain road speed and the defaults are usually five miles an hour or 30 miles an hour, depending on ECM calibration, uh, the light will go off because you don't really need to know the exhaust is hot if you're traveling down the freeway. Nobody's going to get burned from it. You're not going to pull over anything and cause a fire. And that's really what it's for so that people are aware that the, the exhaust is very hot and no one gets physically burned by leaning on it or you don't park over something that catches on fire. So uh, I would what I would use that light for is I would look at my last say 20 regens in uh, the history and so that means I've got to if my regen engines regening every 50 hours 10 regens are going to be 500 hours right so I'm going to have to get an ECM image and then in five, about 500 hours, I got to get another ECM image because in that image is the last 10 regens. And that's assuming my engine regens about 50 hours. And you learn that by just looking at an ECM image and looking at the after treatment uh, history. So once I've got those, those 20, I'm going to look at the um, diesel particulate outlet temperature. Remember, there's three columns of temperature. In that history, you've got the inlet column, you've got the uh, inlet to the catalyst, and that's out of the back of the turbo, down the exhaust pipe into the catalyst, and you've got the inlet to the filter. Uh, that sensors between the, cat, the DOC and the DPF, so you can call it the DOC out temperature or the DPF in temperature, both are right. And then you've got the last sensor, which is the diesel particulate filter outlet temperature sensor. And that is the sensor that triggers the light we're talking about for exhaust temperature. So if I look at my uh, regen history, those 20 regens and the diesel particulate outlet temperature never gets over 1110 degrees, let's say. That's the maximum I see. I'm probably going to set that temperature light to come on at 20 degrees above that. So let's say 1130, 1140, 1150, because it doesn't have to be exact. And then uh, I'm going to set the off temperature to about 1000 degrees. Now I'm going to set the on temperature to 1150 because I don't want the light to come on unless something's going on and my exhaust is getting hotter than normal. And if that happens once in a while, I'm not going to worry about it. If I idle for eight hours in cold weather and then I take off and get on the freeway and I'm in traffic and then that goes on for a day and then finally I get on some open road and I can get over 45 miles an hour. Remember 45 miles an hour is the magic number. You got to be over that about 15 or 20 minutes before the engine can put itself into that driving regen to clean itself. Uh, once, once I get into that place where I can get cleaned, if for the last couple of days I haven't been able to do that and I've got a lot of idle time and low temperature time, that light might come on because the DPF just loaded up. So I'm not going to worry about that, you know. It, it just happened, no big deal. But if it starts coming on on a consistent basis and there's no reason for it, then the next thing I'm going to be looking at is does it go back off after about 30 minutes? So once the light comes on, it's pretty hot, right? And that's hot enough to burn your, your soot that's in the filter. Now, if you're pulling hard, running down the road, and that light comes on, and it, it just seems like after 20 or 30 minutes, it doesn't want to go off, that means that filter is above 1,000 degrees. Why is it staying up there? It shouldn't be. Once it burns that soot out, it ought to cool back down. Remember we said the other day that about the hottest inlet temperature I see to the DOC 
is about 850 and then maybe 950 out of the DOC. And then so that means going into the DPF, the hottest temperature we could have if we're not in any kind of a regen is say 920 to 950. And if we're making another 50 to 100 degrees across the DPF, there might be something going on if it can't cool back down. So that's what I'm thinking in my head that I would do, and those are the reasons why. And then I would have a, a light that would only come on if something was out of the ordinary, and I would know that if that starts happening on a regular basis, I need to stop and get things checked before they get out of hand because a small problem can be addressed for usually less time and less money than a problem that just snowballs down a hill and becomes an avalanche of parts and labor. Thanks for joining me on the first installment of The Lunchroom, and we'll see you next time on Engine Shop Joe. Please subscribe. Thank you.